Yeah, and um, the offensive line looked like they played a little bit better. You had some big runs, and uh, one of the things that, that I was impressed with, we had a couple of very long uh, sustained drives, sure. and that's something we haven't really seen from our offense so far this season. It's been big plays or, you know, a little bit of a short drive and punt. So uh, talk about that and how they started to gel a little bit more well, and are able to drive it down the field. I think um, some of the things we did system-wide offensively helped sustain some of those drives. We were able to um, do some, some no other concepts to really give ourselves a chance to call the best play. And because of that, we were able to complete some balls uh, in some third-down situations and make some, some long runs. Uh, it's some short distance situations. So managing the clock and then making sure you were the best play of this out there. And, and, and we made some third down conversions this week, and we didn't really convert very well on third down offensively the week prior. So uh, what went into the preparation for those uh, really key moments of drive? Well, it, it really was no level of addition to our system where uh, coaches were able to take a look at how the team was set up and give us the best chance to make a play and, you know, we took a chance to get some, some throws. Um, that we probably had in the school board and, and we put it down and went for it, you know, uh, and put it on those gigs and we just took chances that we would have. Well, and, and we even uh, had a uh, fake punt that we converted, and uh, we, we've done that a few times. We're, we're probably a little ahead of the percentages there on converting fake punts. Two or three. Two or three, and, and, and it's probably a much lower percentage uh, if you look at that across teams in you know, a season. And so um, I think we've done a pretty good job uh, of effectively moving the ball uh, and resting the defense. And, you know, I, I found with the depth issues that, that we have had over the last few years, if your defense is not resting, you're going to have a hard time getting in the football game. Yeah, we're using a bunch of 50 guys. Uh, Xavier Dotson played with me on the board. Yeah. Todd Carter played with me on the board. We're uh, going well, and, and I've seen some of those guys uh, get nicked up during the game uh, and then tough it out. You see them back out there the next drive. Sometimes it's a couple of plays later. Uh, and, you know, from, from the looks of it, you know, they, they took pretty good shot. Or, you know, twisting your ankle pretty well, but they were able to get a rack get back out there, and that shows a little bit of toughness. Ty Carter was big one this week. He came down actually a couple of times in the game, and you know, just kept coming back and kept fighting, and so that was good for us. Uh, I'm off his block. Yeah, that's big guys. Those uh, those joints stay holding pretty easily. Yeah. Um, now um, we've uh, we've got Henderson coming up. You know, we mentioned already at the field. Um, Henderson, one of the teams that, you know, are usually generally uh, in the mix every season for a playoff spot. Uh, and they are really right there anyway. Uh, but they're a little down for them. Talk about their offense and uh, what we can expect from their offense and uh, what we can do to try to slow them down. Sure. Um, they have three or four, or they have three guys that they rotate in the quarterback, and then they'll use one of their receivers as kind of a long time quarterback. He's pretty athletic and makes some big plays in the run game, and they're a really good receiver. Uh, the offensive line is, is pretty even, uh, probably something that's expected, but we've seen them kind of slow down a little bit the longer the game goes. Uh, they have some skill pieces. They, they've got a big, a big quick running back. They want to really wrap up and get a bunch of guys to get them on the ground. Uh, well, and, and, you know, we've, we've matched with teams pretty well early, especially. Um, 
And even when we get down a couple of scores, you can, you know, all but really one game, we battle back and all of those. Um, this is a team that, that I could see us even maybe getting you know, ahead of early. Uh, but we haven't really put that together in the first half. How are we going to get to do those? Well, I think it's a combination of some of the efficiency that we had in our office this week. Just making sure that, you know, we're converting those third down like we talked about. And making sure that we don't turn the ball over offensively. And then uh, defensively, we can just got to get those big hats to the ball and get guys on the ground and put them in situations and put them and that third and medium and the third and long and, and get those guys in that situation. I think we have a uh, pretty good advantage because the, the pass game is not you know, super expensive. They have a few little concepts for a lot of it. Uh, we'll get them to follow and create those situations. Uh, Coach, what did you see from the defense that made you think that they were going to be able to get some of those first downs and then make some of those third downs and third downs? Well, and, and you know, certainly with our defense and the, the speed, uh, especially at that second level, we can uh, really put them in uh, down and distance situations that aren't conducive to their offense. And so, I, uh, as we go into Friday's game, uh, defensively, you know, we kind of covered that a little bit, but our offense and Henderson's defense, you know, Henderson's is a very similar school to Leander in terms of they've been affected by the growth of the city and the district that they're in. And, you know, they've lost some players over the wise uh, with that school opening recently. And so, they're kind of dealing with a similar depth issue, although they got more kids to choose from. So, you know, their, theirs is a little less. Um, but how, how can our uh, offense attack their defense and really just keep them on their heels for, for the most of the game rest, rest of the hour? Sure. Um, you got to take advantage of some of their soft spots and defense and play some coverage and in the secondary and be able to throw some of the game out for us and do some things. And when they start pushing up those outside backers, I'm not taking them to a small box and getting them on the ground and backing out through the operation. Just take it for a bit, just don't try to push them down, just make sure you the system and really follow them. So you, you talk about like uh, those little bubble screens, wide receiver screens, or those little tunnel screens, some tunnel screens, some and some hitches, just get a little stuff that we can get out of, out of our quarterback pretty quick and get it to some of our things on the ocean. Well, and I've noticed we've showed a, a, a little bit of uh, some of those screens that we can get out of our quarterback pretty quick and get it to some of our things on the ocean. Well, and I've noticed we've showed a little bit of a jet sweep package, but we haven't really spent a lot of time on it. And uh, you know, I don't want to ruin any, any future plans, but uh, um, talk about that aspect of the offense, having those ends carry the ball. Uh, you know, just kind of look at that. We did a little bit last week, not a lot of time, but we did the guy was just a way for us to control some of their outside linebackers and uh, keep them away from the interior and run stuff. And so if they're going to load up a lot of people on the outside of our area, uh, they're going to run them inside. If they're going to set people in the big box, and they're going to be inside. Is that something that uh, Landry decides, or is that something called in from the office itself? No, I'm typically all that kind of stuff in. We're not quite yet. We're not going to know the conclusion. Yeah, they're not really going to ask us what we're going to do. Sure. And there are certain things where you go and get the call right now. Well, let's stop talking about football for a second. Let's start talking about program building uh, and parent participation. And, and that's why we have uh, Lisa up here with us uh, as well. Um, and I just mentioned it, and you know, it's been a thing. It's kind of been a, an ongoing. Almost a built-in excuse for the end. You know, we're growing and they keep splitting away, and, uh, and it is a tough situation. It, it's, it, but it's, it is what it is, right? Uh, and because of that, in my opinion, there's been um, a little bit of a less of a focus, less participation for parents uh, and students uh, in the program itself, and. You know, I commend you for coming in and, and, and really turning it around almost immediately in terms of numbers. But, uh, you know, we still got a long way to go. There's a lot of programs to build. And there are, uh, 
one of the concerns, and I think uh, it's we've talked about it in our, our booster meetings, is that if we could get a lot of parental buy-in and participation, then um, extended family participation will come in, and all of the uh, numbers will fall into place, and we'll start getting kids through the program, and there'll be uh, there'll be more pride in the underlying football, like it was just not even a day.
you know, I'd love to do this kind of stuff forever, but I also know that's not realistic. And, you know, we would like to be able to transition to new crews uh, that take over everything, you know, just not just Booster, but, you know, uh, MJ's been working concessions for a while. Um, her daughter's going to graduate, but then she has a son who's coming, but I don't think he'll be up for a couple of years. Yeah, uh, so, he, so she may still want to do concession because she's a uh, little crazy. Seven right more years. So. <laughs> well, that's good. Yeah. See, and, and, and you've established it, and, and people can, they recognize you, and they can come to you, right? And so, let's talk about how you got into photography first. We'll start there. I mean, two boys in sports, that's how it started. Um, they were little and playing two ball, probably three, and I was just taking pictures from the sidelines, really. Um, you started with like your phone and you graduated no, I, I the had, camera? Like, a little, I had a little camera, it wasn't like the one I have now, but uh, one of my friends at Liberty Hill actually, a loaded in Liberty Hill for the first three years, and uh, she was taking photos and writing them. So once you're down there and getting pictures, it's, it's almost addicting, but it's fun and you learn, and I, I really enjoy the pocket and stuff. Um, it's in a way a selfish thing because I get to be down there, you know, and see things like this, but also I've seen how much the parents enjoy. So nothing gives me more joy than to see what I saw oh, today, yeah. the pictures that I've taken and posted. And you got a nickname. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> or or seeing when the, the kids use the, my pictures for profile pictures or on their Twitter or whatever. It's just, that's why I do it. So I think anytime you volunteer, you volunteer from your heart. I think coaching, teaching, all of that is, is done based on something that you want to do. Right. The time you spend here is not because you're getting paid for it. No. You, you want to do it. So, um, and volunteering doesn't have to be eight hours or twelve hours a week. It could be you know a couple hours a week. But I think I think the way I look at it is I'm doing it for my kids and for all the kids. That's kind of popular, you know. But um, they grow up so fast. And in just a few years, they're just like you said, their kids are, you know, growing up. Yeah. So, yeah, as tired as I am sometimes, I know that in five years, I'm going to have all this free time on my hands, you know, so I kind of suck it up and do it, and my kids know I'm there for them. And so I think that's kind of, you know, that's the selfish side of it, is I do it because I want to be around. And I think if anyone's considering volunteering or they're afraid to volunteer, there's things that you can do that's just a couple hours a week or, you know, easy things. You just have to kind of, you know, put yourself out there. Don't be afraid that it's going to be an eight-hour day because it's not. I think that if there's only eight of us on our board right now, there should be called that point. So if the eight of us can do the job of 20, just imagine if you had to. And that's what I said, full-time job. Right. And yeah, I mean, I'm a single mom with two kids. So, I mean, that's, you know, to, to fit that in, and I'm, I'm able to do it, I think anyone can can give up an hour or two So that's probably my, my biggest thing, and you've heard me talk about it. You know, 170 kids. We shouldn't have the same 15 parents volunteering all the time. So that's, right. that's kind of where, you know, if you, and I know there's more than 15 that volunteer, but we have a lot that contribute monetarily, and, you know, things like that. But I just think with the number of kids that we have come I need to pick that up. Well, and, and there's nothing wrong with, with money, and yeah. we definitely want that. Yeah. yeah. But at the same time, uh, some folks can't give uh, extra money, yeah. and you know they, they barely get you know the minimum, but they may have time. And, and they yeah, a lot of reached out to us where they, they can't do that, and they volunteer for extra hours at concessions. That's awesome. I think that the more that do that, and maybe people don't realize that they can do that. Um, I think hands-on is probably more important than the, the money at times. And when you have fundraisers and ways to... Well, it makes so much money in concession. It's nice to have people there. Oh, it is. Concession is crazy. I don't know if anyone's been in there when MJ has kind of given the, the beginning of how you order food. It's insane in there. So, I mean, kudos to them because it's crazy in there. But, um, but like I say, I mean, there's there's things. If you if you want to learn, you know, one of the moms is with me on the phone right now, Jamie Games, and she wants to go and talk to me, so I help her. You know, so hopefully maybe next year she can help me when I'm more concerned. And when we talk about the, the number of things that you can assist doing, you know, you may be an accountant and you may not want to be uh, dealing with photos or people or what, but you can be the treasurer for the yes, club, or you can assist the treasurer because that's right, ours is graduating, uh, so to speak. So There's so many things, I mean, we've done 
the, the cars and, and spirit wear and I mean, those are a big thing. That's where I was I was moving. When you have eight people, you, you have a certain number of ideas that can be generated in a in a session to raise money or, or you know uh, honor the kids or you know uh, coaches or teachers whatever. Um, but if you have twenty in that room, then you know you're, you're more than double those ideas, and and it's a uh, one of the keys to that are the different perspectives that, that come in. Uh, whether it's, uh, you know, it doesn't even have to be a parent. You know, you could be an older sibling who, you know, had a little bit of a parental role raising a certain kid. Come on, participate. We, we want you. Right? And, it, and there's there's so many different things to do that it's, you know, it's not just concession. It's not uh, just... Yes. We, we decorated locker rooms this week. Um, there are uh, the varsity mom dinner coordination, uh, senior night, there's the varsity dad dinner, uh, yeah, homecoming. Yeah, homecoming right now, but you were saying, well, the freshman and parents are stepping up. We have the freshman uh, parents that uh, gave us a house yesterday so we could get everything ready for the float. So we do have a lot of the younger um, kids and parents come out, which is great. And I'm including them you know, for next year because I think that's where we're going to be the strongest, just like coaches building the team right now. We have to build this business, and it has to stay sustained. Right. Well, and, and the team can only be built so far without the business. Right. Right. I, I did a lot of research when we first started. I think I showed you guys looking at other clubs and what they do for the teams. And it, I don't know how many people realize that we don't get money from football. And we're, I mean, our money is very limited on what we get in the school. Right. So a lot of the money is in what we need for your gym, and for your workout equipment, and for the practice equipment. Everything comes from the music stuff. So I'm not sure how many people actually realize that. And I'm definitely going to put our focus next year is to let them know that, no, we don't get sales and tickets to our, uh, you know, I think in, in years past, maybe that's what we're doing. It's the fundraisers, it's concession, yeah. and that's, that's, you know, there's a budget that, that coach deals with, but it's no more, and it's probably less every year. Yeah. Yeah. So, uh, and, the, and the prices are certainly not going down for equipment. Practice equipment, uh, some of the things we, we bought this year, we bought knee braces for offensive linemen, we bought uh, headsets for coaches, we bought helmets uh, through one of the fundraisers, uh, and you know, there's money that's spent on um, uh, Gatorade, meals, I mean your parents kick in some money for you, but not everybody gets to it, so there's a little bit of a shortfall, and so that has to be made up, and um, so, you know, I, I've traveled around to a lot of schools covering football games and baseball games and basketball games over the last four or five years for the end, and we were in 25-6A a couple of years ago, and we were uh, visiting Westlake and Lake Travis twice a year, in basketball and baseball, and um, we're uh, once you know every other year in, in football. And I'll just use baseball as an example. Like Travis, uh, I don't know the rules, and I you know I don't know if businesses are just slapping things on there because, but you win some games and you build a program up, and businesses are beating your door down to be your your basic sponsor, and it's not an easy thing to get to that point. And that's where the participation is key from uh, parents in the community. You know, I, I plan on uh, giving my time to Coach Price and, and being able beyond what uh, my children participate. Now, will it be full like it is now? Maybe. <laughs> Maybe not. But um, ultimately, I would like to... I would like for this to continue on. You know, when when I started doing the game broadcast and the podcast, I we were having some booster club issues money wise, and, and I discovered that we were spending four thousand dollars to broadcast ten football, and and I thought there, that can't be the bottom line. You know, it has to be cheaper than that, and so and it, it's you know once you start going through that you pay and equipment and all that stuff, yeah, it starts adding up. But we decided one time investment in equipment and then uh, we wouldn't take pay 
and it's made all the difference. So that each year, that money instead of going to a different organization is is going right back into the, the program, and that's the kind of stuff we're looking for. If you can donate time, materials, uh, yeah, just your knowledge. Just a minimal boost in the house so they do a voting I mean, that, that starts us off good and strong for the season. And the goal, it, it's my goal, and I'm sure somebody else is on the board, is to lose the season or end the season with money. So we don't want to be in a deficit, we want to be in a surplus, right? So that you're starting things off good next year. So, well, we've had several years where that was not. No, okay. this year was a big one. I'm just saying, we just need to force our bets out. Right. So we're going to get where today, and I think that we've all done an excellent job doing it. And, Next year's going to be better, just like I'm sure it's easier as things get settled and understand things more. I haven't done this in this aspect before. Mm -hmm. so, um, I don't know if I do this for next year, and I just hope that people want to join us when I go forward this year to make it so that people want to come do this. They're organized, it's more like everything's communicated better. Sometimes maybe too much communication, <laughs> you know, but it's better to have too much sometimes than not enough. But, you know, um, so well, before we talk about next year, let's talk about what our needs are going forward in this season. So we've got a, a homecoming game coming up, but this Friday we, we're on the road, but on Thursday we have um, the uh, JV game here. So somebody's going to need to put up flags and take down flags. Right? Well, no, they're at RBMS. Yeah. Well, we're doing RBMS, okay. So we're not inviting PA here? Because that's out, in the, that's out in the crowd. I used to all the time. I've done it. That's easy. This one's going to be nice to do, I think, for us, so as far as working it from right. um, this week I think um, I just put a, a sign up out for the area from the day rates for the players pre uh, pre-game meals so um, I just put the sign up of that so if the parents want to help out there we need 16 cases that should last the rest of the season um, so that's out there right now and I'm going to be um, putting up another one for our um, this is not help but I want everybody to buy our program right um, I kind of and it's a fantastic program. I, 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 I well, you can kind of hold it up and um, show how fancy it is. So this is going to be our, our uh, program for the season, for this season. And it's all teams, it's not just varsity. Yeah, it's not just varsity, it's all the teams. And it's still, it's 36 pages. So um, I kind of need the pre-sale, it's going to go online. So um, just look for that right now. I don't want to what we're doing, but we'll be out there online here in the next few days. So. Make sure you get your player to sign it in case they actually do the Right? <laughs> <laughs> but as far as needs right now, I think right now we're just focusing on the day rate. Mm -hmm. um, We've got homecoming coming up. We do. Um, we're doing pretty good on that. We've gotten a lot of donations um, for that. Um, we have all We've the stuff. Float. We painted yesterday. There was a paint party on Sunday. Yeah, so all we need is more bandanas. I think, um, we got the hay donated by our whole country fees, and then uh, Dave made a deal for the rest of the game. Um, players are some cowboy boots. Yes, the players, all the players, both <laughs> the varsity and uh, Dave, we need to find some cowboy boots. It's the theme. Yes, it's the theme. We're real familiar. We're open with the Rangers. The Rangers, yes, the Rangers. <laughs> yeah. um, so they're each going to get bandanas to wear the, the red and blue, so yeah. they want to dress yeah, up. They got 10 gallon hats and red boots. So, yeah, I, don't, I don't think we have any hats. We've got boots. Yeah. And then if the players can just bring candy. I know we have a bunch of candy, but we can't have too much candy. There's a lot of kids that go out there for um, the event. And since we're on here, the, the parade is next Monday, the 30th. A week from tonight. A week from tonight. And it is going to be the same route we always did around uh, Lakeline, Oak Bay, and about the, the high school. And so as a result, they're, they're is likely not going to be a podcast on Monday. It's probably going to be on Tuesday. I need to talk to Scott at the bottom of bucks. But we're going to try to continue the homecoming week that very next night. And we'll get into uh, Wednesday and Thursday with the playing game. So, um, all right. Well, Coach, do we have any players in here tonight? That's fine. All right, well, let's start with Caleb Rude, and then we'll, we'll go from, he's not here, we'll start with, we'll start with Garrett Landry. Yeah, one of you already tied up there, and then we'll bring, we'll bring up uh, 
Unless you want to leave, I can do them both up. Uh, you sure? I can stay. Once you stay here. Okay. I'm sure you got some insightful questions for Barry. Oh, yeah. <laughs> well, you get as good a, a view as even. That's the other thing. This is the first time I've ever been in the Bible Center. Yeah. And I've been in the Bible Center since 1999. But they're volunteer positions where you're on the field. Yeah. And it's really cool. You just got to watch. If you get too close to the sideline. You learn real quick. Yeah. They, 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 five or six guys over 250 you come rolling at you really fast. <laughs> you learn to run. Yeah. <laughs> You're surprised how quick your reflexes are, huh? Garrett Landry, how you doing, buddy? Good. Welcome. You know, I've known Garrett for uh, quite a while. I coached Garrett in a little bit of youth football. I always play a little bit of quarterback. Uh, do you remember our, our little surprise uh, quarterback sneak play we used to do? Yeah, we did it on um, – you go into center, you just yeah. lift up. And, and we, the defense wouldn't even be sad or anything, and I'd just go like this. I and, remember that. Yeah, we'd score a couple of touchdowns doing that. We did. <laughs> Scored one against Cedar Park. Yeah, that was a, that was a good game. We should have won that game. We didn't. <laughs> don't get me started. <laughs> so um, you've always been kind of a quarterback that, 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 that I've known. Mm-hmm. Um it's a tough position, you know. I mean, a lot of eyes on you. Yep. You know, if things go well, you're the superstar. If things go bad, even if you're, it's not your fault, mm-hmm. you, you catch a little bit of blame. Yep. Talk about that position and how it is to deal with that kind of pressure on a week-to-week basis and how you, you know, you just move forward because you, you, you stay pretty even keeled. Uh, well, being a quarterback, you have to uh, – it's a big responsibility taking up um, – Knowing what defense they're running, uh, and from week to week, always changing the plays and how we run different plays and different passing concepts, new passing concepts, and uh, all that types of stuff. So it's a big, uh, big role to take. Yeah, because in the heat of the moment, you know, are you thinking, oh, is, this, is this Stony Point? Were we supposed to, th- you know, am I supposed to? Yeah. <laughs> no, wait, it's not Stony Point. It's, mm-hmm. you know. So you have to be ready for all of that, and, uh, and that's a, something you have to do in a very short amount of time so you play a game on friday you do a little bit of film study and a a workout on saturday Mm -hmm. uh and then you're already preparing for that next game yep and uh you you're limited in your time you know one we're limited in the amount of time we can have contact yeah uh but you're also limited in the amount of time you can practice so does that does that force you to spend time on your own studying plays and looking at film um yeah, kind of. I try and watch film as much as possible. I mean, you know, I got to work and sure do other things outside of school. But uh, same, same. That's what we've been talking about. <laughs> as, if I can watch as much film as I can, then you know, I'll I'll try and do that. Now, uh, is is that film that's assigned you by the coaches through Huddle? They don't assign it specifically to a certain person, but they assign it to just the whole team, uh-huh. and they label it as like you know, like for this week, it's Hendrickson versus. Um, who they play? They played Westwood. Yeah. So Hendrickson versus Westwood, and you just watch like the defensive Hendrickson film. Did you watch that film at all? The whole game? Um, it went no. down on the very last play, is why I asked. I guess Hendrickson and, and Westwood. Westwood. Yeah, the Westwood went for two game. at the end of the game, and they really? won. They they got it and won. I'll so. probably watch it ne- uh, tomorrow during school. The uh, the the stretch here with, with Hendrickson. Uh, and then, you know, Westwood, I mean, we have Vista, and then Westwood's one of those ones coming up after that. Those are teams that, you know, we should be able to compete with and maybe even in, in knock off. Yeah, for sure. Um, so when, you, when you're looking at Hendrickson film, um, do you see things that, that make you feel like, you know, we're going to be able to move the ball consistently? You know, oh, I'm not that worried about this secondary or, you know, what – what, or, or better yet, what stands out to you that, that you, we need to be concerned with? with De- defensively? Defense. Really nothing. They're, they're almost just like Cedar Ridge. Um, they have really one player. I mean, they all look like real good athletes. Uh, all look real fit. But uh, the defensive end, number seven, is like the defensive end from Cedar Ridge, number six. Mm-hmm. I mean, basically the same guy. Um, that we slowed great. him down pretty we, good. Then. We did, and you know, yeah. Connor Crazy in the O line. Yeah, they did really, a good job. Really did a good job against him. Um, but yeah, I mean, he's just probably the biggest threat on defense there is this week. That's really it. And their DBs are kind of small, like uh, like Cedar Ridge, but uh, 
It's really just number seven. Yeah, they can jump high, though, and, the, and oh, they're yeah. fast. Yeah. So um, when, uh, when, we, when we go out into the game, do, can we expect a more, more run-oriented attack this week, or are we, are we looking at maybe airing it out? So you don't have to tell me. <laughs> He's <laughs> looking around like, He's like should, I, should I let that info out? <laughs> he <on> there? <laughs> He's saying no. <laughs> It's Long Ball Friday. That's what. That's that what question was not approved. <laughs> <laughs> okay, we'll, we'll, we'll get we'll get a little more personal then. <laughs> Who are you taking to homecoming? Tell, yeah, <laughs> homecoming's coming up. Do you got a date? I do not. Oh. Hey, did you hear that, ladies? <laughs> um, okay. School. What are your favorite your favorite classes? Now. Probably history. Who's your teacher? Coach King. Coach King. Well, that nice. wouldn't be a, a bad thing. He, he's, a, he's a bright guy, though. He, he probably teaches it with a little bit of excitement, too, yep. right? Because mm-hmm. history can be dry if the, the person's just reading dates and yeah. events. But uh, if he talks about it in terms of a uh, little perspective, yeah. then that makes a big difference. So is he your, your currently your favorite teacher or just that class? Or do you have that a, class. A, who, who's your favorite teacher? <clears throat> Probably my science teacher, Miss Payne. Miss Payne, but you don't like science as much. <laughs> well, I mean, I like science, but I like history probably mm-hmm. best this year. Uh, I mean, Miss Payne's real nice. She's real, she's laid back, but she's strict at the same time. So, uh, you know, we get our stuff done, but she's real chill in class. So, um, when you look back at like Giddens and Running Brushy, is there a teacher that just stands out that you know, man, I I'll always remember that teacher, oh, or that coach. Uh, it's a long way to think. Yeah, it is. Um, a I lot like, of stuff has happened since then. Yeah, a lot. <laughs> Wait till you get to our age. Yeah. <laughs> no, I can't really think of a teacher, a specific teacher, or coach, class that you know really stood out in those middle school and elementary school days. So no, you're not gonna you're not gonna leave no. somebody out accidentally no. by, <laughs> by answering the question. No. Okay. Um, so going forward, obviously you like uh, some more academic related courses you like science you like history um you know you're not that far away from graduating yep uh you know granted you still got about a year and a half a little longer uh what are you thinking about doing after you get out of leander uh obviously i want to you know continue playing either football or baseball at the next level um that's the main goal but if that doesn't work out um i'm taking the accounting class right now with coach henson so accounting's in there somewhere um, future uh, treasurer of the booster <laughs> <laughs> um, I may be uh, start looking at electricianing. That's a good one. I may start working there with a buddy pretty soon. Uh, Talk to Coach then, Williams about right? that stuff. Yep. And then also uh, interested in cars, so I may uh, take an automotive class next That's year good. and start working with cars. You might you have to run to over to Rouse <laughs> yep. for that, but I don't know. Just for a class, something right? like that. I don't. I, I think don't that's where yet. their uh, shop, the shop is uh-huh. for the district. So, but you're, but you're still really haven't decided. No, not really. And so right now, you you mentioned you're working. Where are you working at? Right now, I'm working at uh, Bill Miller. Barbecue. Oh yeah, working Actually, over there with Wells. No. Riley Wells is, is he still working over? Hayden there? Wells. Or Riley. Riley. Oh well, Hayden could be there now. <laughs> no, neither neither the Wells brothers were there. Not anymore. No. Riley was working there. He works at Pluckers now. <laughs> oh, is that right? Yep. Okay. Nice well, I know he's going into uh, the uh, special forces. He's just waiting on something like the boot camp time to come mm-hmm. up or, or whatever. Anyway, uh, okay. Well, uh, we're going to bring up your teammate. We're going to talk to him for a few minutes. And then I, I, did uh, Rude show back up? I don't think so. No. So we'll talk to Matai, and then you and Matai can compete in a little bit of trivia <laughs> for prizes. It's football trivia. So. And I'll give you multiple choice, so you'll be able to guess. Okay. It won't be that bad. <laughs> you want to give a shout-out to your dad? Yep. Mom, dad, brother, right there. You want to you talk about how terrible the Packers are for a few years? <laughs> I mean, Packers are 3-0. and Cowboys, they play, you know, the three Giants and, and the Dolphins, though. 3-0. Yeah. <laughs> so. I like our odds. I think he's got that great. <laughs> of course. Come on up here, Matai. Welcome. <laughs> Just make sure you put that mic uh, 
fairly close to your mouth there so we can get some volume out of it. That's good enough for you? Oh, that's backwards. Yeah, it, good. It's, yeah, there you go. Speak into it, say test. Testing. Testing, <laughs> testing. <laughs> okay, Matai. Uh, senior offensive line, uh, you've heard me say it. You've been to a few podcasts. My favorite position group. Um, there's not a more important position group in the sport. Um, it's not an easy job. Definitely. It's definitely a thankless job. Talk about what it's like being a guard on a, on an offensive line. Um, being a guard is like you pretty much get like no love, especially when it's like um, <laughs> touchdowns. It's like all the clout like goes straight to the receivers or the running back, and it's like. I love you guys too. Yeah. yeah. Well, you know, you know, when they score, it, it's funny because they always run and, and do that uh, hip bump in the air. Mm -hmm. But it's you never see a lineman as the guy. I mean, very rarely, occasionally you will, but for the most part, it's always another receiver, or running back that's running up there jumping in the air. Mm -hmm. And I think part of that's because the the receivers know that if they jump up in the air and, and up against Matai, they're probably going to get knocked down. Yeah, so. and it's like, then again, it's like, oh, you're a big boy, and you have to run all the way down the field. That's the other thing, <laughs> right? Because we, we do have a lot of big plays that we score on, and, and you know, if it's a 45-yard Dotson run, you know, you're – is a big fella that you've been pushing guys around at least in that drive for about five minutes and throughout the game more than that you're like sidelines right there i can run down there and celebrate water cow we'll get some water yeah, yeah i always like, like <laughs> over here <laughs> like you right celebrate when, when you, they get to the sideline right yeah right when you get to the uh scores we have to like run down the field anyways but i don't want to run down the field and then run straight to pat so I just run to PAT and wait on them to get there. Oh, that's there. right. You, you got to do the extra point. And so. then uh, the Marvin Gaines sideline kind of like, you know, handshake and kind of uh, congratulate him from scoring touchdown. And he just like thanks and it doesn't say anything about the O-line and just like, yeah, it's okay. We blocked for you. One, one of the good things about being uh, on the O-line is you don't have to really uh, do kickoff. Yeah. I Honestly, if I was on kickoff, I'd – I probably wouldn't That's run. That's just an extra sprint. <laughs> yeah, for no it's like a 100-yard sprint. I'm not <laughs> willing to do. Well, and you, you kind of have to be fast and, you know, really good at open field tackling. Big guys can open field tackle. It's just running 60 yards to make that open field tackle. Not always our favorite thing to do. Yeah, so. definitely not <laughs> the favorite thing to do. <laughs> see, we do have, like, um, a backup uh, guard that goes in for kickoff. Uh -huh. But um, – I'm pretty sure he's pretty tired when he comes right off. The right, kickoff. well, you know, and then if, if there's like a, somebody's offsides on the kickoff or it goes out of bounds and the other team makes you do it again, yeah. you got to run down there a second time. <laughs> yeah, especially if that's uh, no fun. And we run, we run uh, like big plays down to the end zone and we run all the way down there just for it to get called yeah, back. Because you're excited. Yeah, <laughs> and then you just have to walk back there and it's like, oh my God. <laughs> Who held 40 yards behind us? <laughs> um, okay, so. Defensively, because you, you spend a little bit of time on the defensive line, too, uh, really, especially in goal line situations. But I, I probably see you of the starting O lineman, you probably spend more time on the D line than any of the other O linemen. Um, talk about how hard that is to go uh, play. Because I've, I've done that. You know, when I, when I played in high school football, I played offensive line, but our defensive line was just our offensive line being rotated so that we'd rotate three or four guys at a time every three or four plays. And that's just awful. I was so tired at the end of games. Uh, and even on games I didn't play defense, just offense is, is miserable. So talk about how, how uh, what kind of shape you got to be in to do something like that. Man, you probably got to be like in the shape of like a receiver or running back because like right when you go off of offense, it's like a especially long drives, 13, 15 play drives. It's like your heart's already pumping. He's like, all right, you got to go on defense. You got to go chase somebody who's running away from you. So right, and you like, were just pushing a guy that probably weighs as much or more than you for the last eight minutes. Yeah, you know? and, and it all comes down to, like, the mentality. You have to be able to, like, be willing to exert the rest of your energy to your team and just put forth the effort to keep going. So kind of what I have, I just, when I get on there, I'm just like, I know I'm tired, but. You know, next play, you just got to get after it. I got to play as hard as I can. Well, and offensive linemen tend to be protective by nature. That's kind of their job. You find those protective people and you put them on the line. Uh, but there's a certain nastiness and aggressiveness 
that if you can have that as an offensive lineman, that you, you become that next level special. Uh, talk about that when you when you know you pancake somebody and you know and they want to try to get up you push them back down or or do you are you going for that next guy? Well, normally when I uh, pancake someone, I just kind of lay on them and, and I just like <laughs> get a little bit of rest. Too. Yeah, I'm just like uh, I need to rest a little bit, and so it's like my resting time to cause a whistle. And sometimes I ask him like a couple of questions, like how you doing? And yeah. he's like, Yeah, I'm doing fine. And I'm just like, All right, and then um, let's get up and play the next play. That's always fun uh, when you use a little banter back and forth. Not necessarily trash talk, although mm-hmm. that occurs too. Yeah. But, you know, just, uh, so where are you going after the game? That kind of stuff. You can tell when I take pictures that they're doing that too. Some of the pictures I get. Well, you know, I always think of, uh, you know, a recently retired quarterback from the NFL, Andrew Luck. And there's a, a kid at, at Southwestern, uh, uh, David Brandenburg. And they like to, they both, you know, Luck obviously was a quarterback. Brandenburg's a running back. But when they get hit and they get hit hard, you know, the defensive guy will stand up and, and every time they'll stand up and go, that was a great hit. <laughs> and it just shocks the defender into thinking, wow, I just really hit that guy as hard as I could and he just jumped right back up. And uh, I know it hurts to do that because I've been hit like that. But, um, you know, it's, it requires a little bit of uh, control of anger because it's easy to get angry out there yeah whenever i'm out there like i get i get up mad but i was like i think about it because like if i end up doing something wrong i could cause the team a penalty and it's like i don't want to go back more yards than i already have to so i just kind of like control myself and i think about it i'm just like no i just play the next play they'll just already in the past i'll just keep playing well and, and our opponents tend to want to try to go us into that stuff and we've got to recognize that right and make mm-hmm. sure that you know, I think it's, it's you know, it's the reason I mentioned that approach that Andrew Luck takes, I think it's a better approach because it really shocks the, the trash talking into more of a banter and less, uh, less anger. And uh, if you can get in their head a little bit like that, then, uh, you know, it can, it can help you. Mm-hmm. Uh, let's talk a little bit about school. Um, favorite class? Favorite teacher right now? My favorite class would have to be... It would be ASL 2. This would be my... That's a sign language? Yeah, it would be my fourth language I've studied. So you're um, going to come do the national anthem at one of the basketball games? No. Why I, not? <laughs> I, I they, had, they had four people out there at the football game on Friday. I, He's in I, ASL 2. Oh. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, some people from ASL 2 can sign up, but, like, I don't think I'm that good of, like, a... Uh, it just takes signing. a little practice. Yeah, though. it definitely takes a lot of, like, a little bit of practice to... Uh, be able to do it, especially like against a large cr- large crowd, and the people who go out there and do it. Honestly, I don't know how they can do it because I'd be really nervous. I'd mess up a lot just to do the uh, national anthem. So, have you already signed the song that you have to sign, or is that coming up? Where you pick like a, a, a chosen song? Yeah, you pick like, a song and have to sign it while it's played there in front of class. Yeah, I did that at uh, NASA one. That's last it. year. Yeah, we'd also do it this year as well. But the song has to be faster paced. ASL one is for like a slow pace. Because you're just like understanding how to. Uh, yeah, the sign. national anthem's too slow then. Yeah, sometimes long, it man. can't be too slow. So you, you do you do a rap song? No, uh, no, that's <laughs> not for me. You definitely gotta do that. No. So you, what did you do for your song last year? Last year I did uh, Country Roads. Okay. And, um, so that would have been a huge hit right at that time, probably. Just yeah. came out actually. You can do it for the float. Is that what we're doing on the float? Yeah, that that's a song you chose. I, I, guess. I didn't choose. Yeah, I'm pretty sure you chose it. <laughs> um, okay, uh, now going forward, you know what what's Matai plan on doing? I, I know you, you've had a, a little difficulty uh, injury wise, and you know is so that's something you want to still do? Play football in, in college or? Yes, or? I've been through um, countless injuries, and I still get up every morning saying like I need to play I want to play like I have the hunger just to play football and when it stops it stops and it and that hunger stays yeah so. and then I want to go on to the next level I want to hopefully be in the NFL I think I'm talented enough as a player to be able to get up that high I just gotta it's, it's to about work and, yeah. and and a break or two you really do need a little bit of luck but you can make some of that luck yourself and it's done through hustle and it's not just hustle on the field it's, you know, it's hustle and highlight reels. It's hustle on getting it out to, you know, coaches that could recruit you. And uh, another important thing, at least uh, collegiately, are grades. 
Yeah, These grades are very you're, important. You're, you're pretty smart, right? You got to make pretty good grades. Honestly, as of right now, I'm kind of, like, struggling. I'm trying to get up there. I'm missing a lot of school due to some family things. But, like, trying to catch back up is would be the hardest thing to do. Especially. It's hard to fall too many spots your senior year, though. Yeah. I mean, you have to do pretty bad to, to fall out. Uh, have you received any interest from colleges? Yes, it all started um, last year. I played, it was my first year playing a line, and I made a second team all district, and I just, some colleges started coming up, and I've never spoken to a college coach, so I was, like, so excited. <laughs> I didn't know what to say, so I was, like, talking to them for a little bit, and they said they'd be watching me this year, and so far I haven't talked to any other coaches, but as far as um, coaching for this year, uh, I'm just kind of waiting to see what comes in. Well, and and it's one of those things, and uh, you know, we, we, you know, Rich had some experience going through the recruiting process with his son. Um, it can go all the way up till right before the the season, uh, and there, you know, you'll see teams will be looking to fill out their roster, and and you may find an opportunity at a school that you know by waiting that you you didn't think you had a chance at. It. So, you know, of course. Uh, there are schools that give athletic scholarships, and then there are smaller schools that only are allowed academic scholarships. And you know, one of the ones that that I uh, work with is Southwestern, and uh, I think you'd fit in nicely on their offensive line. Yeah, I've gotten uh, one of those invitationals to uh, their camps uh, a couple of months ago, but I was never able to attend. It's just that um, I was really busy over the summer. To be honest. Yeah, um, Coach Austin's a good coach. It'd be somebody to talk to. So what we're going to do here is we're going to bring uh, Landry back up. I'm going to let you go. <laughs> you, you're off the hook now. We're going to do some trivia for surprises. It's football-related trivia. Most of it is uh, high school football, Texas high school football. And I'll, I'll, I'll give you – I'll make it fairly easy in terms of you'll have uh, uh, multiple choice. Okay. <clears throat> the first one's not multiple choice, but it's it's <laughs> easy. You should be able to get it. Uh, and if Landry doesn't get this, then I mean. <laughs> <laughs> well, uh, so if you know, if you if you're ready to answer, first person slap the table. Okay, don't slap it too hard. <laughs> so, Texas high school football has supplied the NFL with a great deal of quarterbacks, especially in recent history. Name three of those quarterbacks. They they played high school ball in Texas. They're cur currently or recently in the NFL. Baker Mayfield, um, Drew Brees, and Nick Foles. And those are correct. So that's yeah, the first I have question. No clue. The others are uh, Andy Dalton. He played at Katy. I didn't know he came out of Texas. Yeah, he played at Katy. He was undefeated as a quarterback in high school. But that's because he was on Katy. I mean, I could have quarterback Katy. <laughs> Uh, Derek Carr, uh, you, you got Foles. Ryan Mallett, uh, Ryan Tannehill, former Aggie. Matthew Stafford, he played at Highland Park. Um, Johnny Manziel, not currently. Like Josh McCown is another one. So there's a lot. So no pressure. <laughs> no pressure. <laughs> okay, question two. How many high school football stadiums are there in Texas? There are either 585, 775, 685, or 1,305. Which is it? Or B. B is incorrect. D. It is 1,305 stadiums. The combined capacity for all of those stadiums is 4,130,440 fans capacity-wise in Texas high school football stadiums. That's a lot. Pretty impressive. You think football is important around here? No, just, just a little, little bit, a little. right? Okay, so it's 2-0. Let me see here. Let me get a good one. Okay, the oldest active high school football stadium in Texas is St. Anthony Catholic High School. Their field is Lang Field. It was built in 1910. What is the capacity of that stadium that was built in 1910? It's either 150, 350, 750, 
or 950, which is it? I'll say 350. That's incorrect. 950? That's incorrect also. It was, well, you said 950? Yeah. It's 750. Oh. <laughs> so still 2-0. Okay. Y'all play on a lot of turf fields. Yeah. What do you think the percentage of artificial surfaces are in those stadiums in the state of Texas? Is it 30%, 35%, 50%, or 75%? Like the entire... Uh, all of the high school stadiums, all of those, uh, what did I say? There were 1,305 high school stadiums. What is the percentage that are artificial turf? Got to remember, just so you're aware, this is all of Texas, right? They're not all in a big city. What's the percentage that are? 35%. That's correct. It's 2 1. 35% of high school stadiums in Texas have artificial turf. I thought the number would be higher. I really did. But it's because we are in, a, in an urban area and we're constantly playing. Uh, on turf fields. Okay, there's a gentleman by the name of Donald Moore. He went to Splendora. He holds two high school football records related to interceptions. In a game in 1977 against New Waverly, he had how many interceptions in that game? I'm not going to give you uh, multiple choice on this one. you got to guess. How many interceptions did he have? in that game against New Waverly. It's a record. Five interceptions? Incorrect. Eight. Almost. It's seven. Uh, what's amazing is between 76 and 79, he had a total of 59 interceptions. That's pretty impressive. There's some bad quarterbacks in his district, <laughs> I guess. All right, the kicker has uh, feelings, too, is what this question is called. Uh, what is the longest – there are three guys that hold the record. Texas high school field goal record. What's the longest field goal made in a Texas high school game? Say 63 yards. And the closest is going to get this one. He said 63. What is your guess? 54. It is 62. So 2-2. Two, two. Now we're out of high school questions to the NFL or another stuff. Okay, the, cow the Cowboys, uh, out of their eight Super Bowls, they won five. Name the two teams they lost to in those three Super Bowls. Oh. Actually, there, there are three teams they lost to. Name those three. No, there's two. Two teams. That's right. Two teams. They lost to one of them twice. I'll get, that's the one hint. But they also beat them once. I'm not a Cowboys fan, so I, I don't even have a clue. Neither am I. Well, they, um, the, the thing is, is they lost those before you guys were born. <laughs> they actually lost one of them probably before your moms were born. Uh, <laughs> I'm going to take a guess. Um, the Broncos and the Bills. Those are both uh, teams that lost to the Cowboys. But. I'm going to go with the Giants. and the you can't play the Giants in the Super Bowl. Oh, I did not know that. <laughs> both <laughs> NFC. Oh, okay. So, I'll give you another shot. They, they've been in the news a lot. They haven't won a lot of games this year, but they've had a receiver that was just causing all kinds of problems, got traded, and then got traded again, got cut. I'm not going to laugh, no clue. <laughs> <laughs> okay, it's the, My guess is it's the Steelers and the Colts. Those oh. are the two teams. And it was the Baltimore Colts that the Cowboys lost to. That's the one that was before your, your moms were probably born. Because it was before I was born. Okay, um, the largest college football game was at Kyle Field. Uh, and it was A&M versus a one of their conference opponents, although they weren't in the conference at that time, the uh, attendance was 110,631 fans. Who did they play? Texas. 
incorrect because it's I said it was a current conference opponent. Oh, it's a current conference. Let's make a guess. They're in the SEC. I want to say Florida State, but I don't think that's... No, that's right. ACC. Yeah. You would be Florida if you are guessing the Florida team in the SEC. It's going to be... I'm going to go on ahead because we get, we, we're way past time here. It's Ole Miss. Ole Miss. I yeah. They, they, they played Ole Miss in the, the largest attended uh, college game. And I actually played at Kyle Field, so it's pretty cool. Uh, if you get an opportunity... Uh, to play college ball and uh, get to play in a stadium like that, it, it's it's nice. So uh, I want to wrap it up. You know, I want to thank uh, the crew for uh, pushing through all of the technical issues and uh, for those crew members who couldn't be here, it's your fault um, that we had these technical issues. <laughs> I can blame them because they're not here. Uh, hopefully they're listening. Anyway, we're going to wrap it up. We've got a game Friday uh, at the field. Make sure you attend. Uh, Monday is the homecoming parade. And then uh, Tuesday night is likely going to be a podcast there at Bahama Bucks. Look for the uh, promotional information on that. Thank you, gentlemen, for coming out. Thank you. Go get them on Friday, okay? Yes, sir. Thank you.